Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, I'm going to do a full tour of the main garden. And bottom line, 56 degrees right now. Yesterday it was 80 during the day. And I have finally gotten my energy back. So spent the whole day yesterday cleaning out the garden. Got over, you know, the slowdown that happens to me when the heat rolls in. So I'm excited because the garden is pretty much back to shape. One of the things I want to talk about, not trash bags, but what's in them. So there were so many weeds in there, it was crazy. I didn't even want to show that. That is grass. Those are seed heads. A lot of people ask me, what can you compost? What can't you compost? You can compost everything. But I do bag up any kind of grass or weeds that were in there that have flower heads because they will continue to mature a little bit, fall into your compost pile, and if you're not hot composting, those seeds are going to be thrown all over your garden. So I don't want that. So I am bagging that up. I am throwing it away. Before we go inside, outside, this is a tomato that I'm doing a whole series on. I've been doing, you know, a little video each week on it, just showing how it grows. This tomato is in beautiful shape. It's outside, whoops, it's outside my garden. The cage right there wasn't doing much. The deer would just stick its head in there and they would eat it. So this old ag fabric is taking care of the deer getting in there. But just look how nice it looks. I mean, it's really healthy for middle of August. This was planted really late. You can get your crops in next year. Like you don't have to put your tomato plants necessarily in as soon as it's warm. You can wait put them in later and the temperature changes as I've been talking about sometimes the plants do better so this is a beautiful plant have trees growing in there and pots that have rooted into the ground they're all going to get moved so I like I believe this is a tulip poplar which I love grew these from seed I have them around my property they get to 40 60 feet tall so I'm growing these trees to put in different parts of my garden, well not garden, that'd be crazy, different parts of my yard to replace some trees that are damaged. They're all going to get moved, so you know, part of the garden over there is growing trees. Alright, let's go inside. I'm going to have to take a quick pause here before we roll in. The battery's getting low. <laughs> now this place was a mess. Normal. Our gardens get out of control, we get burned out. Enough said about that. We're going to do really a full tour because I did so much very happy, like I'm saying, to get it back into shape. Let's start here. I'm looking forward to the fall garden. It's actually, you know, I don't need a jacket, but it's under 60 degrees. It's really, really cool. So this whole space was cleared out. The peppers are beautiful. Been harvesting them out of here regularly. This is where I'm going to grow peppers every year. And what I'm doing is making decisions for my garden next year. Here's a close-up of the peppers that are growing in this container. I think there's 12 plants as I do a public service announcement for the Rusted Garden. I have a podcast I'm doing now regularly. The second episode was just done last night. They're going to come out every second and fourth Wednesday. It's the Rusted Garden Homestead Podcast. And it's all about growing food, cooking food, sharing it with family and friends. So that'll be coming out regularly. Check out the video description. And my blog is active now. So anytime you hear me going over recipes or lists of plants, I'll be doing a companion article at the blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. And this way you don't have to jot everything down. You can just go there, print out the blog post that's associated with the video. Beautiful space. This was a pepper plant that got beat up, snapped off. And you can see all the new growth that's coming in. Much more green growth than the peppers that haven't you know accidentally been topped off but just so many different bell peppers growing in here and it's only six feet wide maybe or six feet long two feet wide and this is going to be the pepper garden for bell peppers actually this is the second year so two years great success I'm going to stick with this bell peppers will be going in here so check on my list this is going to stay blueberries doing well. They're going to get fed an acidic fertilizer probably in September, help bring down the pH for the soil. Um, blueberries do prefer a soil that has a little more acidity, helps it better use the nutrients in the top surface roots area, etc. This is my second year of growing ginger in here. It looks wonderful. Ginger loves the ambient heat, but it doesn't like sun baking down on it. So after four or five years, I figured out the perfect way to grow ginger in my garden. This is going to stay. This has all been weeded out. 
got to take care of the trees and the hops. That's another day. Was putting like tomatoes in here, strawberries over here, stuff that I didn't really need or wasn't using. So these are probably going to end up being flowers or maybe more ginger with the same idea that shaded by the blueberry bushes there gets plenty of sun early on later in the season the bushes are fully in so they're nice and cool could it do the same principle here and here maybe with the ginger i don't know how much ginger i need but that's a ton spinning over here these are my towers that i used to fill with different vegetables all kinds of different things only going to be really strawberry plants i just put in some marigolds I've taken all the runners that are falling yesterday, tucked them into the pockets where they reached, watered everything, and this is these five towers are just going to repopulate themselves. The tower over there probably is going to get strawberries next year, but I might put in leafy greens. And the reason being is I love the leafy greens. A rabbit did get in here and it's eaten down some of the transplants that I put in. Not that big of a deal. But I'm not sure I need four towers of strawberries. But what I'm not going to do is just plant vegetables and random stuff all over the place. So the theme here is going to be strawberries, flowers, and maybe this will be more, maybe a combination, maybe leafy greens and strawberries. Again, putting a check on the list that this space is going to have a specific use so that I can get food that I enjoy and I can get it throughout the whole season, meaning spring, all the way into late November next year. Part of that, I'll be using the cold frames. A lot of the grass that you see or saw in those bags came from this space that was just out of control. I may move this as picks up, um, but I want to grow spinach. And this will actually allow me to grow spinach through the entire season here, through the winter in Maryland, because spinach does really well with the frost, with the freeze, this warmth will take care of it. I'll clean this up. Not sure where I'm going to put it. It may end up staying here so that I don't have to walk so far, you know, from my house, which is right over there. I can just walk right out here, take care of things. This is a deeper version of a cold frame where I put peppers out in pots. Maybe it was beginning of April. It might have been actually the beginning of March. Anyway, the temperature stays regulated in there. The frost doesn't show up, so I was able to get out a lot of my seed starts last year really, really early. I may try overwintering some peppers as we walk by. I'll talk about those. Overwintering means that you would dig up a pepper plant just like that, put it into a pot, stick it somewhere where a freeze doesn't get to it. It goes dormant, you replant it, and you have a bigger plant next year. Look at all those potatoes. I put two red Pontiacs right into this space. I just replanted that too. You can keep your potatoes going every 70, 90 days until a hard freeze comes. But those potatoes came out of there. It was just two red Pontiacs from a grocery store. And look at these, just so you can see. They're massive, so I'm gonna make mashed potatoes tonight. Onions did pretty good. Lost a shishito, that's fine. It was a little beat up. Could have tried to save it. Didn't want to because I'm going to be putting peas in there. So I'm transitioning my garden over. And next year, one shishito, two shishitos, plenty. Because I haven't been able to eat them all. So again, I'm going you know, through my head this year. Quantity and placement. How much do you really need? And I'm going to really try and stick to that. Peppers in here, they're beautiful. The eggplant is forming. Last year... It was like all these eight ball round eggplant, which was a mistake from this, the seed companies. This happened to a lot of people, but they're growing now. It's the right eggplant. Didn't do as well as I wanted to. They should be, you know, past hip high by now. So these will probably get moved to a different location. A place that gets a little bit of coolness, shade, but they like the warmth and maybe they were getting I don't know. It just, it just wasn't the right spot. Look at these beautiful peppers. This is a beautiful variegated leaf. Snacking peppers, all different colors. That's going well. The blackberries, of course, they're getting out of control. And I just, I don't have the heart to rip them out. And haven't had the time, really, 
to plant everything up, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. Probably I do know what we're going to do with them. I'm going to leave them in a garden, and I'll say the same thing next year. This whole area was transitioned over. That shade cloth was hanging over here, just a temporary way to keep the August sun from pounding down on here. So I've got lettuce, a rabbit got in here, chewed down the broccoli back there. This space is going to be a place where I grow the cool weathers longer into the summer, from spring into summer, and start earlier in the summer into fall. And I'm going to be building a structure here where I can put up a shade cloth and everything will just be shaded, obviously. That will allow me to grow the lettuces, peas, radishes, whatever I want to be growing into the summer so that the soil stays cooler, the plants don't warm up too fast, they don't flower, bolt, seed. And one of my goals is to really have more leafy greens for as long as I can. The muscadines are beautiful, they were hacked back, but I cleared out all the space. The rabbit was hiding somewhere in here. Again, I don't know what to do with this fig tree. It's got some hops growing in there. So it's kind of looking cool because the hops, vines, are growing into the fruit trees Maybe I'll just keep that up, you know, for a look. But again, check off on my list. I never really knew what to grow in here. I was just putting in plants that I had behind me, other parts of the garden. They would get infested. Oh, look, this was some broccoli. No, this was kale. And I'm only doing two kale plants right there in the middle and then another broccoli back there. Rabbit ate it down. Instead of doing six kales and six collards that would just feed the white flies and harlequin beetles and army worms, I, would, I just wanted to do two, so we'll, we'll see what happens. All that stuff that's coming up, those are radishes that fell from a radish that I let seed and drop seed everywhere, or flower and drop seed everywhere. But this space was just not being used well. It's now going to be something that I can extend the growing of cool weather crops, beginning of the season towards the end of the season. So that's kind of like what I'm doing now, is I'm just going through the list and checking off what kind of changes do I want to make. The cherry tomatoes did not do as well as I wanted them to in this space. I may not do that next year because I have cherry tomatoes hanging on there. I might do just one plant actually, maybe up front. But I'm going to reduce the number of cherry tomatoes. I had one, two, three, four tomatoes in determined varieties in here. I've removed anything that was beyond beat up, stayed small, and I'll be making assessments. And this guy, you know, I didn't decided not to come back and prune all these. You can see They've got to be staked up, and they go seven feet tall. I'll give these tomato plants some care, but they're going to keep producing well into September for me. So I was just kind of getting rid of the plants that don't do well, like that cherry tomato plant's not doing well. This is probably a Juliet in there or something doing really well. So out of these three cherries, this one would be the keeper. This is a really great plant. This is a yellow apple, I think. Nice apple-shaped yellow tomatoes. Nice and green. I've been able to keep up on the spraying. No blights on here. You know, there, you're going to see I left the tomatoes on because I have too many. So some of them are just rotting right on the plant, even though I've been harvesting so many of them. Doing well, doing well, doing well. This was a single stem, double stem tomato that I pruned down. I think it was a chef's red. It didn't like being pruned. You know, so... Not every tomato plant has to be pruned down to a single stem or a double stem. It's produced, that's, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tomatoes on here. I've already taken off about 12 of the baseball size tomatoes down there. But again, with all the tomatoes, I just have too many. So I'll be cutting that back. The peppers did not do super well in this space this year. Don't know why. I mean, good, tons of jalapenos. I'll be harvesting more today. Probably will do the same thing, maybe less plants. Going to keep the beans here. I'm letting all these purple potted dry on the vines. Going to maybe be selling those or, you know, giving them away to perk members. Just different plants that I'm growing in my garden. So, again, take the time to look at the work that you've done. I, it's real easy. I've been saying it. To get lost in, oh my gosh, I have to do this, I didn't do that. And kind of beat yourself up. But take a moment and just scan through your garden. You know, all this was a mess early yesterday. And now it's, you know, better under control. Love the sunflowers. These were planted by me. 
by hand, direct seeding versus, versus the nature seeding that I call it. And these are replacing all the sunflowers that I removed from the garden. And they were just dropped right into this bed. I'm going to do this again. Like I love sunflowers. The cattle panel is actually going to keep them from falling over. These are 12 feet tall easily. And I like being able to look from the house out here, see the sunflowers. Along here will be cucumbers growing a watermelon. Things went crazy with the melons, which is fine. Like I have, and cantaloupe. There's a cantaloupe right down there. These are parent type tomatoes. Can't eat them, you know. Love the way they look. The cool weather, or the cooling weather, is bringing the plants back to life. But there's just so many, like I, I don't have enough time to make videos, share what I do, um, and then tend to the garden. Watermelon, they are amazing, and I'll show them to you in a second. Not the right place for them, but I decided, I love melons, so a lot of my garden is going to be dedicated to growing watermelon. These are crimson. Look at the beautiful melons in there. The whole key some spraying you know they are beat up because of the heat they're going to start to die back water 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 they so i'm not sure what i'm going to do with the containers here there are three of them one right in here one right there and then the third one right up there it has to be something that's a little more contained i put in too much but it's all right the cantaloupe here self-seeded i let it go I didn't really, you know, necessarily have a plan for it. All I put in was the carrot tomato. Because I wasn't coming out, you know, kind of burned out from the heat, a, a cantaloupe grew right in the rungs right there. If I was coming out checking on it, that guy would have been saved. So I'll be figuring out what to do here. I don't really mind the melons. I just didn't need three plants. They also turned out to be crimson instead of the smaller um, sugar baby melons. This is a green zebra. It's a tomato that actually, when it's ripe, it's a kind of a green yellow. I'm sorry, not green zebra. This is a um, chef's choice green. I'm going to keep this one. It's super prolific. Here's what I was talking about. Like, you don't want these all throughout your garden. They're going to just drop seeds. Let me put this somewhere I remember to pick it up. Going to be a keeper, and it'll be one that I keep because I want a green and a yellow tomato. This guy is coming back to life, growing everywhere. It's just not really growing any tomatoes, which is really weird. So that's going to be a keeper, not because of what it's doing here, but because I grew the same variety along my wall of tomatoes, and it's doing amazingly well. I'll show you that in a second. I only have one zucchini plant that's mature right now. Oh, look at all the squash bugs that hatched. Those are squash bugs. One zucchini, two in there, ready to be harvested. Been able to take care of this really well. The vine borer didn't get to it. The vine borer is pretty much gone. You know, I'll have to take care of the squash bugs, but this guy should keep going really until the frost comes. More melons in there. There's a little baby crimson. So. This year I was really experimenting with getting melons in the ground, see what I need to do. Across the way, we've got beans that are coming in, have pole beans growing up there for shade. Shade cloth helping these tomatoes come back to life. Again, I'm just spraying them. You can see some nice large tomatoes on there that have to be pulled off today. Some still rotting on there, but those will be turned into sauce. But there are so many green tomatoes on there, things will be good. That variety just didn't do well gone. I'm not even going to worry about that anymore. Across the way, you can see three melons. Those are the sugar babies. That's what I thought I was going to have behind me. Instead, we got the crimson. Probably keep those there. Let's spin around a little more slowly. The melons that I just showed you in the uh, metal containers have grown all the way out this way. They're going up the ladder. This is a whole space that I'm not really utilizing well. Those are peanuts in there. Here are the tomatoes all coming back to life and they need to be really staked up again like this bunch. I believe these are Arkansas Traveler. Let's look because these are keepers. I'm making sauce with them, eating them in salad. Salads. Arkansas Traveler. So many beautiful tomatoes. 
the varieties in there. I may keep one or two. You can see that I was just whipping the tomatoes off the plants, dropping them on the ground. And I made like 40 pounds worth of tomato sauce from everything over here. Beautiful, beautiful, beat up. Maybe I won't be keeping that one. Let's see if we can do this without getting too much of my shadow in here. This is the gladiator, the one that I just showed you that doesn't have any tomatoes on it. This is the third round of harvesting. These are much smaller. They were double that size. Took them all off the bottom, made sauce with them. And you can see that tomatoes are coming back. I managed to stay up on the spraying so I don't have any diseases. They're going to get a mid-August water-soluble feeding, get them growing, and I will have tomatoes until the frost comes, which is, you know, my goal. Again, take the time to take a look at everything you've accomplished. Let's get out of the sun there. Corn is doing really well. That was an experiment to see when can I grow corn and will it be ready? I think it'll be ready in plenty of time. Planted, I think, July 15th, July 17th. It's a 65-day corn, and it's doing really well. Here's a box that was from a video that I forgot to clean up. That was creating shade for some of my cool weather crops. The corn is doing well, so I'm going to do 65-day corn throughout my garden in different places and figure out how I can get more corn into the garden. The raccoons come, they beat up the corn that I grew two or three years ago. I'll have to figure that out later. In there, look at that. That is not a weed. That is actually arugula. So I have arugula I can start harvesting. Because it's still warm, some insects are getting to it. When the temperatures drop, those insects will be gone. Let's move into here. And you can just see, you know, the garden is pretty much under control how I want it. Those are the super hots. That's another round of zucchini that I put in to take the place of the one that's doing really well, which I don't think I'm going to lose. So I'll have two zucchini plants going. Super hots are good. This is where I stopped. I have to get in here, finish cleaning it out. All the rusted garden compost tomatoes are going crazy all over the place. Butternut squash, the main vines are getting beat up a little bit, but they've expanded, let's see, 6, 12, I don't know, 14, 16 feet. This whole section, maybe we'll end here, is going to be for shade. Same you know, reasons that I explained earlier in today's ramblings. I'm gonna put in seven foot post, seven foot post, use cattle panel like it's right here, maybe going across the top. The vine here, the butternut, always does well. It's gonna go across the top, all the way down, and out here. I'll be able to plant cool weather crops under here. I'll be able to put some tomatoes and peppers under here that will stay cooler. They will be able to produce when we get the heat of July. It'll be this really cool shade where butternut squash will be hanging down. So again, check off on my list of changes. What do I really want out of this space? And I don't really need more beets because I got beets over there. I don't really need more turnips because I have turnips behind me. What do I want to use the space for? And I want more shade area. There's some celery that's still going that'll get cut back and probably not used because it's beat up. But with the cool weather, it's going to take off again. I'll have wonderful leaves for stew. All right, let's go to the front real quick. We're at the west gate of the garden. This section you've seen a lot. I've grown all kinds of different things in here. I do a lot of the cool crops in here in the spring. Not sure exactly what it's going to be. Looks overgrown, but these are all cantaloupe. I put too many in there. The cantaloupe are starting to form, kind of beat up. Not sure I'll keep this variety because it just trails way too much. So I'll be looking for a smaller vining variety of cantaloupe. Have beans in there, watermelon in there. Again, testing out all the melons in here because I want melons coming in regularly next year. I want to just add a lot of fruit. Back in there, you can see beets that are still left from what I planted earlier in the spring. So I don't need beets all over in that section that I talked about. Beautiful sunflowers that I planted. Again, some of them are almost 14 feet tall. I like that look. One cherry tomato, large cherry tomato. This is the variety I sell at my seed shop. It doesn't even have a name except large cherry. Always, always does well. And you can see the vine is coming down here. 
probably eight feet tall and it survived. I mean, it's just beautiful. If you get burned out, keep up on the watering, keep up on the spraying. Got to fix the tower up. Those are bunching onions that grew all last year, survived the winter, look like that now, and they'll be coming out. I actually have seeds. So the sun's starting to come up. It's earlier in the morning. Basil looks great. This whole space looks pretty good. We'll end with the fabric pots. Not exactly sure what this section's going to be. These are cowpeas, which are beans, if you're not familiar with them. They form like this. They're absolutely delicious. They grow really well. You can see no pest pressure, no disease issues. There's only probably four plants. There's only like four plants in here. So part of what I'm gonna do next year is not overseed. You know, I still suffer even though I say, you know, don't do it. When you have a space, you put in too many seeds, the plants look small and cute. But four plants have really filled up this area. This is a great bean to grow later into the season. Again, disease resistant, no real pests on there. We can take a quick look in there. Well, let me show you this. So I have, you know, the videos on what you can grow in seed start in August and September. That's spinach because it's just being shaded. It's germinated, it's doing well. That will help me get spinach out into the garden sooner. Cantaloupe right in there. Peas, there's a watermelon that seeded itself on the ground. Radishes are pretty good. Still a little bit early for me to be seeding the cool crops in my garden. Wanted to do that for the video. So I'll be replanting some things, coming up with some different ideas to get more of these cool weather crops out. They're just kind of getting beat up. Even though it was 80 yesterday, 56 right now, we're still getting 90, 95 degree temperatures. And sometimes they just, you know, they germinate, they get beat up. All right, one more place to look. So this is the garden that's outside my main garden. Deer can get into here. Lots of watermelon. If you have a good eye, you can see one growing right there. Melons, cantaloupes, pumpkins will probably go in here. Potatoes go into here. Peppers are doing really, really well. Beautiful. They're covered with that fabric because the deer were poking their heads in and eating them. That's, uh, I want to say asparagus. No, artichokes. They're starting to bloom. I just really grow those for the bloom. I don't know if you can see the beautiful purple flowers, but they're all going to bloom in the next seven days or so. I really like how they look. Potatoes go into these grow bags. I have melons in there and actually sweet potatoes. Deer are an issue, but I'm going to figure out how to maximize and utilize this space. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are getting your energy back for a fall garden. I mean, just look how beautiful the sunflowers are. I have a podcast now. It'll be linked in the video description. And I'm writing in my blog every day and putting in lists and recipes and things that you might hear in the videos rather than jotting them down. You can go ahead check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. Again, that'll all be in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully your weather is doing what you want it to do. Maybe you need more rain, maybe you need less rain. A lot of places need less heat. We're gonna get there. Just try and get your energy back, get the garden under control the best you can, and kind of be thinking about fall and even a little bit about next spring. Thanks so much for watching.